Hey leader, David Burkus here, organizational psychologist and author of four best-selling books on helping teams do their best work ever. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how to avoid burnout on your team when they're working home, let's be honest, for the extended future. One of the most interesting things that's happened in this year, in 2020, has been in response to the COVID-19 crisis, a number of companies who on January 1 would have said that working from home, managing remote teams is too cumbersome, there's too many drops in productivity, uh, why bother to fix what's broken, we're, we're not gonna even try remote work, had been forced to try remote work. And now, as we're recording this, we're about halfway through the year, and let's be honest, over half of knowledge workers are working from home or working remotely. And where are they gonna go when this is all over? Well, they're not gonna go back to the office. So managing remote teams, leading remote teams, and remote work inside of even normal Fortune 500 companies where you never would have dreamed of them being a remote company, that's here to stay. And one of the very first things that we learned in this global experiment with work from home is that productivity actually doesn't decline. In, in fact, the opposite is true. Productivity in teams and individuals increases when people work from home. I mean, why? It's quite simple. There's not as many distractions at the office. There's not people knocking on your cubicle. Well, I guess it's not a door. It's like a cubicle opening. I, I don't know. Now, distracting you with random questions. You don't have a commute anymore. So people start to work from what used to be their commute start time to what used to be their arrival at home. So that's extra hours there. And in fact, all of these things lead to productivity increases, but they also lead to an increase in burnout. I've spoken with dozens of remote company leaders and team leaders who have been forced to manage a remote team now. And that's one of the very first things they tell me is within a month, people were burning out because they were working too hard. So in this video, we're going to talk about four ways that you can manage burnout on your team, that you can eliminate burnout on your team. But these four takeaways are actually geared towards you, the leader, because people take their cues off of you. They model the way that you demonstrate. If you're sending emails at all hours, if you are showing no boundaries between work and life, they are going to think that that's what gets rewarded on the team and they are going to mirror you. So these takeaways are for you just as much as they are for your team. Let's get started. The first one is to set business hours. Now, you know, in a work from home environment, you could work 24-7, 365, and many people do, and that's what leads to burnout. But if you haven't figured it out already, that's not sustainable. And so the first thing you need to do is to set business hours. These don't have to be nine to five. There really hasn't been a reason for eight to five or nine to five work in a knowledge work economy for a very, very long time. So if you want to do a couple hours in the morning, a couple hours in the afternoon, maybe two hours in the late evening, because that's what works best with your working life, that's fine. But set those business hours largely in stone and communicate those hours to your team and then keep them, right? So if you're getting emails late at night, but your business hours are, let's say you wanted to keep the nine to five schedule or your business hours are that you do one hour, but if you can't get to anything else at the end of the night, it's just gonna have to wait till tomorrow. If you maintain those business hours and if you communicate them, people will start to do the same thing. People will start to realize that it's unrealistic to expect an email response every 45 seconds. So why bother checking my phone that often? People will start to realize those things. So set business hours stick to them and encourage your team to do the exact same. Now the second tip once you've set business hours is to develop an after work ritual and maybe even a pre-work ritual as well. Rituals were a part of our life when we all worked in the office. You would get up on a work day, maybe you'd don a suit, right? Suit and tie, pocket square, optional, and then you would commute somewhere to work. You take the train, you drive a car, you would do something that would signify you are making the transition from non-work life to work life. And now if you're working from home, you don't have that ritual. Your commute is literally seven steps into the kitchen, or in my case, it's down a short flight of stairs into the basement where I, I work from. It's, it's not as big a ritual as when you used to have to drive to wherever you did work, but you need those rituals to signify the boundaries of when work begins and ends. Predominantly, you need an after work ritual. You need something you can do to signify that this is the end. Uh, my good friend and the brilliant writer Cal Newport has this wonderful ritual he uses with a computer. He goes through all of his tasks, he goes through his calendar for the next day, and then as he's shutting down his computer, he says to himself, Schedule shutdown complete. 
Meaning, hey, it's over, right? This is like the equivalent of telling the computer to shut down, I'm telling myself to shut down. And if anything pops into my head after that, I remind myself that I've done my after work ritual, I wouldn't have started that ritual unless I checked all of those outstanding tasks, I'm okay. And that after work ritual really helps him de develop a boundary between work and life that lets him actually be off work when he's off work. Because no surprise, time away from work makes work better. In the same vein of an after work ritual is my personal favorite tip, which is to change devices when you change modes. So when you're in a work mode, you have certain devices. I mean, somewhere along the line, we all listened to a Steve Jobs keynote, decided we needed an iPhone, and now everybody's taking their work home with them every single day back when they were at the office. Now their work is with them wherever they travel throughout the house because they've got that phone, they've got that tablet with work email and work apps on it. So eliminate that. When you are done with work, switch devices. In my case, what this looks like is that I have a phone that's on me during work hours, during my normal business hours. And when I'm done, I walk to the charging station and I flip that with an iPad that doesn't have work email, doesn't have work apps, has nothing other than basically entertainment and my personal Facebook page. And that's it because at that point, I'm done with work. I could still walk to the other room and get that phone if there was an emergency, but the fact that there's a little bit of friction helps me tremendously draw a boundary between work and life. And the fourth tip has less to do with drawing a boundary between work and life and more to do with what you do when you take breaks during those work hours, and that is to get outside. When it comes time to take a break, don't just move from your work screen over to your couch and open up Netflix or Disney Plus and watch a quick episode of something and think that that is going to give you rest and regeneration and re-energize you. One of the things that's been most consistently proven over the last 10 years is the restorative effect of walking around in nature. That means walk outside, if you can walk around your neighborhood, if you can walk to a forest behind your house, if you can just get to a local park that will re-energize you, restore you, and give you a better use of your break time than will just taking a break in the same place that you're doing work. In fact, if you don't believe me, that's actually what the research says. One of my favorite studies of this asked people how restorative they think a nature walk would be to their energy and then actually surveyed them about their energy afterwards and surprise, surprise, walking around outside in nature, even if it's like a tiny little local park with two trees and a little bit of grass was shown to consistently re-energize people more than they expected. So get outside. Now, if you apply all of these four tips, re remember them all. Set business hours, develop an after work ritual, change devices when you change modes, and get outside when you take breaks. If you begin to follow all of these, you'll find that you are actually limiting your likelihood of burnout, but more important, your team will emulate you. And you probably already learned that. You probably already learned that little things like saying thanks for the fast reply sends a message to your team that they ought to be replying quickly. So you need to be deliberately taking these steps, deliberately applying these four tips and being showy about it so that your team knows to apply them as well. You could even leave the conversation of, hey, let's all schedule what our business hours are and communicate them to each other so that we know what to expect from everybody. And when you find that happens, you'll find that not only are you less burned out, but you are still more productive without that burnout, and so is your team. Working from home is not going away, but what did go away are the boundaries between your work and your life. They were already declining in our modern environment, and now is the perfect time to build them back again. And when you do, and when your team follows you, you'll find that not only are you more productive because you are now in this era of remote work, getting more done with less distractions, but you're less likely to burn out as well because you've created the set boundaries between work and life, and you have created rhythms in your life that will rest and restore you. Time away from work makes work better, especially Especially when that time away is done outside. So follow these habits, make sure your team follows them, and you'll be more productive and far less burned out. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video all the way to the end. If you liked it, make sure you're subscribed to the channel because we post content like this on a regular basis. And if you really liked it and you wanna go deeper, then check out our totally free course, Three Days to a More Motivated and Aligned Team. It's a totally free video course and you can get it at davidberkuscom slash three days. We'll see you there.